not enough of people bang on about the fact you need to get my secret weapon when it comes to keeping your notes neat. You know that feeling after a long summer and you pick up a pen for the first time and you write and you're like, wow, what is this? You don't want to have that feeling. And I wish I had these tips. It definitely would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of hassle. Going out with the old, in with the new. another video. So today we are going to be discussing what you should be doing on your summer holidays to prepare yourselves for a sixth form. So you've now suddenly finished your GCSEs, you've got the longest summer ever, you're going to chill, relax, go on holiday and believe me that is exactly what I was doing. However, there are some essential tips that you can follow in order to make sure you are prepared and just help your transition from GCSEs to sixth form. And if you are new then hi welcome i am anna my channel has all things academia health fashion there's just a little bit of something for everybody and it would mean the world if you decided to stick around and subscribe and if you are not new then welcome back i hope you're doing amazing so on one of my previous videos about 10 ways to smash a sixth form and if you haven't seen it already then i would really recommend checking that out i got a lot of comments of people that were very worried and very stressed about sixth form and I just thought it would be so helpful if you had a little guide on some tips you can be doing to prepare yourselves and just calm you down a little bit. And make sure you watch till the end of the video because all six of these tips are going to be essential for you to do over your summer and just get you more prepared for six form. Tip number one is to prepare your stationery. If you are anything like me, then I literally love going to Wilco's or Smith's and just getting stationery. That is nothing like that back to school trip. However, I always end up with a load of stuff that I really don't need and I actually don't end up getting my essentials. So I've just got a little essential list of things that you need to get. Probably the most important thing you're going to buy are your folders. And what I would recommend is getting a big one for each teacher. You're probably going to end up with, if you take three A-levels, six teachers. We had two teachers per subject. And then I brought just a small little day folder per subject. So three of those. Unless you're taking four and you're super clever. I feel like not enough of people bang on about the fact you need to get plastic folders. They last so much longer than cardboard folders. It's such a faff when the cardboard ones break having to move them all into a different folder. So just do yourself a massive favour and get plastic folders from the beginning. You can easily get these from Wilco's or Smith's. You just want high quality folders because you just don't want them breaking on you. Your absolute life is in those folders and when they break it's a nightmare. Now, the next thing you're going to need is plastic wallets to go into your folders. I kept everything in plastic wallets just because I really don't want my notes ruined. If I spill coffee on them or water, which is highly likely because I'm incredibly clumsy, I just don't want them all completely ruined. So plastic folders for me were essentials and I just got a load of these and I also really only like the clear ones. Sometimes they have a bit of a haze on the front and personally, I just find it really annoying to read. So get some plastic folders easily on hand so you're not faffing around with this when you start. Then of course you're going to need paper because before now you would have been very used to getting your textbooks from school and being able to write on them and I have a times where I've not had papers and my teachers They've refused to give me some. It was a hard lesson to learn when I couldn't write anything for the whole lesson, but I didn't do it again. I always made sure I had a paper on me, and I personally love pucker pads. I even write my notes for my videos on these pucker pads, just because you can so easily rip the pages out and leave a clean line, which someone who's a little bit OCD about their notes like me loves, and they fit into those plastic folders really easily, and they're just big enough. They're just the perfect size. So I ordered about 10 of those off Amazon, and just store them on my desk so you're never short of paper. Then you're just gonna want your pencil case. Go out and get yourself a fancy pencil case if it makes you feel better. I had this black little fluffy one, which I can't find. I'm so upset, I was very attached to that pencil case. But just get whatever makes you feel happy. If you want a plain one, get a plain one. If you want a luminous pink one, get a luminous pink one because you're gonna be living with that pencil case, so you wanna love it. I had all black pens, and then I personally like to have colored pens, even if it's just one different color, so you're not writing your notes all in one color. I always like one different color pen to be able to write with. And then of course, highlighters are really helpful. And finally, my secret weapon when it comes to keeping your notes neat is this little Tipex mouse. I don't know how I would have lived without this. It's not like Tipex. It's just, 
it's perfect i would really recommend one of these so easy to cross out your mistakes and if you like to have neat notes like me this saved so much time on rewriting notes then get yourselves some flashcards if you're a flashcard person or if you're like me and you like notes i would really recommend just these little sticky note things it means that you can easily divide up your work if there's something that you need to go over in class or you're confused or something you can just pop this off stick it on and easily see it for later i use these for all kinds of reasons as little bookmarkers reminders i put them in my diary sometimes they are so handy finally it kind of comes over stationary but i would get yourself a watch now this is probably one of my best purchases because i always used to go on my phone to check the time i don't know if any of you can relate i just used to check my phone It'd be like oh check the phone time i then end up seeing there's a message from someone there's a notification on instagram i'm just gonna have to go and check this you end up distracting yourself you are literally setting yourself up for disaster if that is how you set the time you have to have the discipline of a saint to be able to do that and just having a watch saves yourself so much hassle it's so easy to have at a time and it really helps with time management so i would go and get yourself a watch you don't have to get an expensive watch or a nice watch just a watch that's all you need it's all well and good having your pencil case and stationery organizer but what about your work and preparation the biggest tip i can give you is to actually read books around the subject so when i was thinking of taking a geography i read prisoners of geography and i actually found it really boring so it probably should have been a sign and i actually didn't end up taking it but i would really recommend reading any kind of book that is related to the subject a it is good for you to work out whether or not this is actually a a level you want to study and b if you ended up wanting to apply for that subject's university then they really look for further reading and it can come in so helpful for personal statements and interview preparation or if you're thinking of maybe applying for medicine it might be worth it going out and reading some medicine related books if you haven't already seen my video on how to get into medical school there are lots of tips in there that you could be looking into doing over this long period of time if you want to get even more ahead then subjects like biology and chemistry are the only ones i know about but there will be books similar in all subjects is the cgp guide head start to biology and chemistry a level to basically fill in the gap between gcse and a level and i would by no means go out and learn this guide or memorize it or anything like that you just want to make sure you have brushed up on your understanding of the subject as well as going over your GCSE notes. So I would say about a month or three weeks before you're looking at starting back to school, just to make sure you have remembered at least some of what you learned at GCSE and go over your GCSE notes. If there were any topics that you found really hard at GCSE in that subject, I would make sure you go and spend some time going over those and relearning them so you do understand them because the likelihood is you're going to need these concepts in A-level. A-level is just a build on your GCSE knowledge. So you want to make sure you have a really good foundation that you can build upon. So just go over it. Don't stress too much about doing too much work. This is a break and you want to make sure you give your brain this time to relax because sixth form is a very full on so don't go and spend hours every single day revising for a levels because you're going to learn it all anyway you're going to be fine but it does help to brush up and not forget everything over the summer as your brain is just going to be in complete shock when you get back you know that feeling after a long summer and you pick up a pen for the first time and you write and you're like wow what is this you don't want to have that feeling we want to prepare you tip number three is all to do with clothes and if you know me i love my clothes however it's a bit different in sixth form if if your sixth form is anything like mine we couldn't wear whatever we wanted it was smart business wear i remember stressing out so much this summer over what to wear it really was a big burden of mine and i really didn't need to stress out and i wish i had these tips it definitely would have saved me a lot of time a lot of money a lot of hassle trying to find the right clothes but the first thing i would get is a black skirt and a black pair of trousers with a matching blazer and these are basically going to form your essentials they are your basics and i would recommend h&m and you could maybe get it in one more color if you want and then what i did is i got a couple of dresses just like this from miss selfridges in different colors and then i just used to wear them with a black tights and my blazer over the top and these were so easy on days where i just couldn't be bothered to decide what to wear i just used to throw on a dress and it's so comfy these were probably one of my favorite 
favorite things to wear in sixth form. Then what I did is I just got about five or six different tops that I knew I liked to wear. This being one of them, I love wearing jumpers like this with my trousers or my skirt. And then I got a load of other tops that I just used to be wear. So I would say don't get any more than five to ten tops because at the end of the day, if you wear it ten days later, nobody is going to notice that you've worn it before. And you've probably got a lot of tops you can wear for six form already in your wardrobe. So just to show you a couple, this was just like a little jumper. This top, which was so easy to wear with trousers or a skirt. A jumper like this and it has really pretty little sleeves. Nice shirt that I used to love to wear. This little shirt with just a white vest underneath it just means if you have some tops and some outfits planned you're not thinking about what you want to wear just each night before school you can lay it out so it's ready in the morning and you have these outfits already prepped in your summer and personally i love fashion so i found it so fun getting to plan my outfits in the summer it's just a nice way to organize yourself and it's not strenuous also really recommend going out and getting a nice coat and scarf on your way to school on the bus or when you're driving you don't really want to be having to wear your blazer it's just a bit uncomfy so i got this coat from topshop and i love this in the winter or in the autumns and i just feel like it's such a cute little outfit having a coat and scarf the most important parts of clothes is what shoes you're going to wear and I got these little ones from ASOS. I just love these shoes. I still love them. I still wear them now. And they are so comfortable. You need a comfy shoe. Because I started with them and they were just so uncomfy. They had like a little heel. I used to get blisters all over my feet by the end of the day. You want as comfy a shoe as you can get. I also recommend putting heel grips in the back of these shoes. It just stops it rubbing. Even if they do fit you, I always put heel grips in the back of my shoes. Tip number four is just to organize yourself. Now, it's the perfect time while you're not at school to get yourself organized i would really recommend going out and buying a planner the school might provide you with a planner but at the end of the day it's not going to be as nice as you want it i love these kiki k ones or you could get yourself a bigger one so you can print out and stick your timetable at the front and it just takes away one hassle of six form having to remember what lessons you've got also organize your desk area you probably all have a load of GCSE revision notes. You've probably still got your exam timetable. Get rid of it. We want a fresh start. GCSEs were in the past. You're moving on to sixth form. So clear your space of GCSE stuff. I don't want you to go out and be like, yeah, I'm going to burn all my revision notes. When you might need them, you might end up swapping to an A-level that you didn't think you were going to do. So keep them, but organize them. Get your GCSE notes sorted into the subjects that you're taking for A-level in one place. And then the rest of them, store them away somewhere where they are safe, but not in your space. Going out with the old, in with the new get your study space sorted where you're going to be studying for sixth form because even if you don't want to you'd be spending a lot of time studying from home and you want a clean space what i used to love is to have a separate little area even on one desk so if you have one desk it was like the far left was maths the middle was chemistry and then the far right was biology and used to just like shimmy around when i was doing different stuff i just like everywhere to have its own little home even if that means you're going to have three different boxes in your room actually separating your subjects out physically all of your notes really helps you organize them and keep on top of each one you really need to get organized on how exactly you're going to revise so if your gcse revision didn't work for you then you need to find a new way end of if you were doing flashcards and that didn't work then think about maybe doing mind maps or could do question and answer ideas to summarize your notes i would really recommend ali abdal's channel i will put it in the description box below so you could go now and spend your time actually focus on how you're going to revise it's one of those things when when you start sixth form you don't really have the time to be sat down thinking mm, how am i going to revise you want to be able to just just do it. Just start your revision as you go along. And if you have your techniques sorted this summer, then it's going to make your life so much easier going into sixth form. And my final tip is have a positive mindset. You don't want to spend this whole summer dreading sixth form and being like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. I'm dreading it. No, that is not the energy to put out into the world. I love the law of attraction. I'm all about sending out positive energies but if that is not your thing and you're rolling your eyes being like oh what is she on about having a positive mindset is so important for you doing well but also enjoying it if you think six form is going to be awful then the likelihood is you're going to find it awful you want to see this as a fresh start it's exciting you're going to have 
so much more independent. You've got freeze for the first time. You've got new opportunities. Look at it as a fresh start, a fresh chance. Even if your GCSEs went poorly or even if they went well, Sixth Form is a completely new chapter of your life. It's so exciting and I want you to spend this summer getting excited, doing things that make you happy to prepare and not spending the whole thing worrying about it because it's going to do you no good. It's not going to do your mental health any good and really there is nothing to worry about. So just get yourself excited, follow these tips. I remember being so nervous and I really wish I just spent less time worrying and more time concentrating my energies onto organising myself or preparing and I would love everybody to comment below one thing they are looking forward to in sixth form because I really want everyone to boost each other's confidence this is not going to be an awful time we're not going to make it an awful time we're going to enjoy it and take every new opportunity and I'm so excited for you so I really hope you found this video helpful if you did enjoy it it would mean the world if you would give it a, a big thumbs up we'll see you all so soon everybody have an amazing week bye